Grady had to go to the vet this weekend. Grady. Um, now I want to play. He hates. I want to point out that every time I've put him in his carrier, something terrible has happened to him. Yeah. The first time was when I got him. That was about an hour drive. I took him from his house. To and he was very scared of you. Yeah. The second time, he got neutered. The third time, he had an infection, and I had to, had to go back to the vet again, and I had to get this 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 uh, antibiotic that he had to squirt in his mouth. They don't like that. He didn't like that. Um, then the next time was when we drove here, which was about 20 hours combined over a few days in the carrier. Um, then he had to go to the vet again and get his shots last year. And then today, this year, he had to go get his shots again. So, um, this is how, how Grady reacted to vet. Um, let's, let's bring this up over here. Grady, you're okay. Grady, you're fine. Baby. Oh, Human. Mess. I'm sorry. You have to go to the vet. You'll be okay. When, when she's in the car. Which is funny, because if we just leave the carrier out, Peggy loves to hang out in the carrier. Yes! I, we've, we've got the, the carrier sitting in the living room right now, and Grady's and it's just... great. I love it. As soon as I want her in the carrier, she's like, no, why? What? Why? Dottie yeah. sits in the carrier and just... It, Dottie's reaction to going to the vet is she just turns to stone. She petrifies and just waits for it to be over. So she's very easy for them to work with. Because she literally just petrifies and flattens her little ears and tries to look pathetic until they, it's over. Peggy wants to fight them. They, <laughs> Peggy like, is a little Russell Crowe. She's Peggy Carter, so she wants to fight them. Simba wants to fight them so bad they won't see him without me giving him drugs. <laughs> Even if I'm bringing Simba in just to get a shot, they're like, no, you have to give him the gabapentin. So we have to we have to drug him, or because they're like one visit, and they were like, no. Oh, they they he, kept, he tried to murder us all. They loved Grady. They were it's oh he's so handsome and he's so nice. Oh, big mush. I heard him. I heard them talking about him. The when he took him to the back room to get, take his blood draw, I heard them talking about oh he's so scared. He's so sweet. They just oh. they were just they were just losing their shit. And now look at him. He's fine. He's right there. They love Dottie because she's easy. She just, she just. And Peggy loves everybody. Like Peggy wants, yeah. Peggy thinks she's a puppy. <laughs> Eat everybody until she realizes they're going to poke her. Uh. And then she will fight you. And last time we brought her, it was because somebody punctured her tail with either a claw or a, a tooth. Mm. So they had to shave a little spot on her tail and drain the wound. And she was not amused. <laughs> And this guy just like, now I put it like he used to howl in the carrier. Now he's usually fucking drunk. <laughs> he's like, whatever, man, whatever. I would think that would make him more inclined to get in the carrier. It makes him easier to pick up and put in because he, he, he doesn't fucking, he's the dude at that point. <laughs> and even that only gets you like 20 minutes of grace at the vet. Like that, he'll put up with shit for like 20 minutes before he starts trying to bite everybody's fingers <laughs> off. And then he comes home and he just sleeps all day. He just flops over and sleeps. But in there. All right. Well, now that we've, we've talked about the cats and everyone on the Internet's going, we don't want to hear about your cats. Well, Sarah says um, I should remind you that Grady needs a kitten friend. <laughs> um, no. 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 Anyway, all right, let's get the intro going. <gasps> Did I tell you? Did you start the music? I'm about to. There, there's a new litter of kittens. Yeah, and you, you, you've named them all after Homestar Runner characters. There's a little white kitten named Trogdor. Trogdor! The Perinator. All right, so here we better. go. Each week, 
Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And this is a busy week. I I heard that. I had to whittle it down. I heard there was a lot of fuckery this week. I had to whittle. I whittled the shit down. Um, I In fact, I might use some of this week's next week. We had so many good ones. Wow. And by which I mean good, I mean horrible. Um, Let's start off with another update story. This is it's happening a lot lately. Um. Now, I, I, I don't know if this was because of us, but I'm going to go ahead and say this was because of us. Um, man suspected of stuffing guitar down pants charged in Nashville theft. Yeah! We got him! We got him, folks. Thanks to your tips. This guy in Bin Laden, we got him. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'd call him. <laughs> that might be a slight overstatement of the crime. Hayden Snyder, 32, was booked Thursday afternoon to the Metro Jail on a charge of theft and bonded out a short time later. So he's back on the street. Though well, he yeah, was arrested. he has all that money from selling stolen guitars. Um, according to the arrest, Snyder entered Eastside Music Supply on Gallatin Pike in May 15th. Spent 10 minutes looking over a box of record, records, repeatedly read a synthesized instruction manual, and asked the clerk nonsensical questions. It appeared he was stalling until a back room became vacant. When people left the room, police say Snyder was seen on surveillance video going inside for a, for a few minutes, then re-emerging with part of a guitar sticking out of his waistband. This is why I, I'm so mad at him. This next sentence. The manager of Eastside Musical Supply later reported an Eric Clapter Fender Stratocaster was missing. Is that worse? That's one of those things I would want to have. Oh. But can't have because it's very expensive. So I make, I've got my guitars and I have to limit myself to these two. I want the nice one, the super uber air. I can't have it. And here's this son of a bitch. Apparently you can. Putting it in his pants. Apparently you can. You just need to shove it down your pants. <laughs> See, that's a poorly trained staff, though, because that's definite shoplifter behavior. And you got to know that and live up that dude's ass and not leave him unattended. Um, Snyder turned himself in. Maybe he saw us. Maybe he, he we, we shamed him into go. I think we did this. We did this. I think so. Um, he was suspected of a similar theft on April 26th. Authorities believe Snyder committed similar crimes at Music World and Drummer's Den, as well as Lane Music. He just been going all over town shoving guitars in his pants. <laughs> what kind of life is that, sir? <laughs> yeah, like, is that, are you proud? That's one of those mornings you wake up and it's like, hello, darkness, my old friend. You know, because what are you going to you're doing with your life? You're putting fucking guitars in your pants. Are you proud of what you've become? Do you think your mama would be proud? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that maybe it's a whole family business. I don't know. Let's move on to the actual news news stories. Um, oh, fuck me. We've both had bad roommates, right? I've had a bad roommate before. Yes. I had the dude who punched a hole in the drywall in the apartment we were renting. I had a very, very nice girl who was very obsessive compulsive and would do stuff like rearrange all the furniture without telling anyone. She boiled our toothbrushes because she had a cold and she thought she might have coughed on them. Like, she's a lovely human being, but that's well, tough to live this this is I think this is pretty tough to live with too. Uh, man lit propane canisters on fire during fight with roommate. Never had anyone do that. Charred shoes and a mangled window panes remained outside a Northern California home after a man allegedly set fire to several propane tanks during a dispute with his roommate. Please say 37 year old Sean. Vera Montes got into an argument with his roommate and threatened to set their Elk Grove house on fire. 
He retreated to the room, closed his door, and the smoke was an indication to people inside the residence that a fire started. Roommate's parents told KTXL the argument started when their son confronted Veramontes about his belongings going missing. He believed Veramontes stole from him and told the suspect he needed to move out. That's when they say Veramontes locked himself in his room, lit propane canisters on fire, and jumped out the window before they exploded. Pause. Time out. Hold up. Wait a minute. Okay. If your roommate says to you, um, look, my shit's gone missing. I think you took it. I think you need to go. There are a lot of ways to respond to that. Yeah. You can deny it. You can, if you actually did it, you could just, you know, take your lumps. Um, you could be like, I'm on the lease. Yeah. A lot, a lot of different ways. You know, you could like get a lawyer involved, maybe. Yeah. Because, you know, all, all these different things. What you don't do is pull like this fucking last action hero bullshit. Who does this? Out the window and the record scratch and the freeze frame. And like, <laughs> you're probably wondering how I got into this situation. I just. It... Now, for another thing, why did he have all of these propane tanks in his room just for such an occasion? Like, why has that not come up in roommate meetings? Yeah, it's... You no, know, I notice you have a lot of propane tanks in your room. Propane and propane accessories. Yeah, why, why, why did you have... Is it... it it's, I mean, what do you say? It's a fetish? I mean... But... I mean, when I first moved in with Dan, I had to talk about all the propane tanks in the bedroom. <laughs> It was a problem. I, I, I we just, addressed it, and now he keeps them in the basement. I just love how he just sort of like yoinks it away, lit the lit a set off a bomb, and jumped out the window. Like the problem with that is, presumably, mm -hmm. in a shared living situation, all your shit is in your room. True. Yes. So not only have you blown up all your roommates' shit that you stole, you have blown up all your own shit. You now own no shit. And also, it's, it up. it's really damn hard to deny it at that yeah. point. There's, Especially when you left your charred shoes outside. You, you, you've kind of ruined your alibi. You know? And here's where I go a little mad scientist. I mean, man, rig up, like, a cell phone ignition or something. Leave the house and then call that shit. Don't be right there when the bomb goes off. Just don't blow up the house. Okay, yes, don't blow up the house if you want to be all reasonable about it, Tara, it's sure. Not getting that security deposit back now. No, you don't. Man, I tell you, when I left my apartment in Illinois, we I went over the carpet with a fuck. I rented a rug doctor. I went over the carpet. I swept every damn thing. I wiped down every surface with fucking Lysol. I mopped the hardwood floor. I wanted my security deposit back. And this motherfucker just blows the shit up. It's not a reasonable response. No. Also, I'm pretty I, I'm pretty sure you're on you're on the hook for your half of the lease. The good news is your next roommate won't be able to kick you out. In fact, you'll get locked in at night. Yeah. <laughs> That's the good news. All right. Now this next one. This is... this is. Wait, neighbors were left hoping Vera Montes does not come back to their quiet street. We don't want that type of crap in our neighborhood. Are there <laughs> neighborhoods where you want arson? <laughs> what kind of neighborhoods are you like? You know what I? You know what would really add to the curb appeal if we had a fucking arsonist next door? Yeah. All right. So our next one. Um, this one makes this me smile. I, I, I love this story. It's it's the stupidest story, but I kind of love it. Every time you say that, I assume it's monkeys. It's not. It's amazingly, this is not a monkey story. Whenever you're happy, I assume it's monkeys. This is just so stupid. I I, I bless bless its little special heart. Um, <laughs> Wow, that's like four fuck yous in Southern. <laughs> driver tries to jump close bridge during police chase. Leaves behind prosthetic leg. Wow. Oh, no. 
<laughs> with a crock on it. Yeah, it's got a crock. <laughs> Officers with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department are searching for a driver who tried to jump a, jump a bridge Dukes of Hazard style. This is in Hollywood, so it didn't turn out well. Officers say they encountered a reckless driver Sunday night. He almost hit an IMPD patrol car head on. The driver refused to stop, led officers on a chase to 38th Street just west of Shadeland Avenue, where there is a bridge out. He ignored the signs and warnings and attempted to drive across the bridge. But his vehicle skidded out and came to a rest as he hit the exposed beams. Okay. The thing about the Dukes of Hazard and, and, and Knight Rider and all those movie, all those shows and movies and A-Team and stuff where you could jump over ravines and stuff. The thing about that is cars don't actually jump. There is no A button. Right. Um, they have to put a small ramp or actually some, you know, some, some way of or like propulsion under the car. To make it leap. You can't just go, voop, no, because the end. Or you have to, like, go over a hill. Right. And then hit valley, like the fucking sabotage video. Right. Like, there's specific ways in which that works. Usually a stunt driver helps. Officers arrested a passenger. The driver exited the vehicle and fled on foot. Foot singular. <laughs> Officers arrested a passenger. The passenger was supposed to be at house arrest, but he cut off his ankle monitor, so there's a bonus. The passenger told police the driver is a one-legged man and left his prosthetic limb behind. I'm a little impressed. He ran yeah, away. So he hopped away. At he, hopped, speed. he hopped away from the cops. That's not easy. <laughs> He just had one crock and a prayer. <laughs> it's a good name for his autobiography. <laughs> crock and a prayer. Just, just plus, look at that. That is beautiful. I love this story. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, I don't want to be insensitive to yeah. the NPC community. Just how? <laughs> I'm impressed. Like, was he doing the saber tooth run? <laughs> <laughs> or was he literally hopping? And I'm not like I'm not. I, again, I don't want to be insensitive. <clears throat> but how? <laughs> I that's impressive. He should be like in the Paralympics. Oh, he's he's magical, and I love him. <laughs> Cause I don't. You know what? I'm like, glad he. He, we need to get this man in an athletic program. He deserved to get away. He deserved that. He earned that shit. Yeah. At some point, you got to be like, well. Yeah, I mean, I, if I was the cops, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. We <laughs> we'll see you later, man. We're bested by a worthy foe. <laughs> oh, why did I have this story next? God damn it. I go from one that made me really happy to one that makes me really mad. Oh, for, oh my, oh god, oh my god, oh my god, just... You just went through a whole range of emotions, and we haven't even seen the headline yet. Yeah. I'll let you, I'll let you react to it for a second, before I put it on screen. Yeah, saw this. Oh, what? Westchester County, man. Yeah, black students were cast as slaves in New York teachers' mock auctions. A private school teacher in Westchester County placed imaginary chains on black students' necks, wrists, and ankles and urged white classmates to bid on them. I didn't see that they actually put chains on them. Mock, oh. mock slave auctions at a private school in Bronxville, New York, in which white students were urged by a fifth grade teacher to bid on black classmates quote, had a profoundly negative effect on the children. A you state, think? A state invest... Yeah, you think? Really? Um, in March, a mother of a student in the school about 15 miles north of Manhattan said a white teacher allowed white students 
to bid and buy black students who were to pretend to be slaves. James said Wednesday that our office's investigation found that in two separate fifth grade social studies classes, a teacher asked all of the African-American students to raise their hand and instructed them to exit the classroom and stand in the hallway. The teacher then placed imaginary chains or shackles on the students' necks, wrists, and ankles and had them walk back into the classroom. At that point, the teacher instructed the African-American students to line up against the wall and then proceeded to conduct a simulated auction of the African-American students in front of the rest of the class. You know what I fucking wonder whenever they do this? Because <clears throat> there's always, we, we get one of these like every six months. Mm. And it's never a good fucking idea. It's just never a never good idea. Is. But you know what I fucking wonder? If the point is to teach the horrors of the slavery period of our history, mm -hmm. I promise you all the black kids are familiar with it. A little bit, yeah. They already know it was shitty. Why this... don't we ever auction off the little white kids? <sighs> Maybe that would teach us something. I mean, Tara, Tara. We Tara. don't have that history. Maybe we would learn some shit. I mean, Why don't we ever do that? Tara, do you really think someone would pay for them? I don't know. Um, I, I think... I think in a Tony private Westchester school, the black kids just might pay to be able to torture the rich white kids for a day. <laughs> this is one of those things like, okay, did you make a fake slave auction with the black children and put chains on them? And the teacher's yeah, like... Yeah, it's educational. Yeah. Well, when you say it like that, of course it sounds bad. How is it not... Ever I just really wonder why it never occurs to anybody to flip the script on that. Mm. And... Kids are sold in a select slavery. Yes, I'm aware that it's an actual problem. I am. I'm not saying you should do this. I wouldn't do it if I was a teacher. I'm just wondering why... Anybody thinks that, like, the black kids need to learn about the horrors of slavery and the white kids need to learn about the horrors of being privileged. All I know is that when I was in fifth grade, all I, I, I would have paid dearly for, like, everyone to go away. That's it. I'd be like, if I pay for you, can I make you leave? Awesome. I was such a goody goody in fifth grade. I was in the art club and I got like all A's, but yeah, like it's never, and I'm not, please, it's I'm not endorsing this idea. I'm not saying you should ever do well, it's this. It's a I'm stupid gonna... idea. However you do it. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, you're right. Why does it never occur to them to flip it around? It's a stupid right. idea. However you, you, you approach it. It's a bad, stupid idea. It's going to have a detrimental effect on any child. But I just find it interesting right it's 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 weird right that they always go yeah. for the black kids it's almost like our mindset hasn't changed as much as we think maybe uh now this next story this next story hurts me a little bit because i was just at the top of the show tonight endorsing good omens which is fantastic you should see it if you haven't but in order to see good omens you need amazon prime yeah. Well, this next story, Amazon Prime gets you some stuff, including uh, uh, two-day overnight shipping, all that stuff. Um, this next story leads me to believe I think their people are just a wee bit overworked. Oh, dear. Um, Alabama man mistakenly sent urine sample instead of shower rings he ordered from Amazon. Oh, dear. Um, Tusc Tuscumbia? I think I'm saying that right. Tuscumbia, Alabama. Yeah, probably. He thought he was ordering some household goods off Amazon. Instead, a man from Alabama got, wasn't even close. He wants to know why he was sent somebody else's urine. Yeah, that's a whole different website. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pornhub Prime. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what they mean by Amazon. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Who wrote this? 
Tribune Media Wire. No one wants to take credit for this. Uh oh. Most Prime members know the free two day shipping is a whiz. <laughs> no. I like, you know, I like a good pun. Uh, but no. Man from Tuscumbia says in this case, the accuracy of the order likely wasn't the number one priority. Oh my God. The number <laughs> one priority. Oh. Stop. I opened it. Number two. I opened it, and when I reached in and pulled it out, some kind of urine specimen or something like that. It wasn't the shower curtain rings he ordered. I was very surprised. My son was standing there watching me open it, and he got a good laugh out of it. Uh, he asked WHNT not to use his name, but the container inside the bag did include a woman's name and birthday, likely indicating it was being sent in for testing. Um, the man says he contacted Am There was a Quest Lab, so it's very confused about their new shower curtain. <laughs> What what I what I want to understand I'm trying to understand okay it's Amazon right yeah so you buy stuff off their website yeah how did someone's urine test well get... we actually have an Amazon fulfillment warehouse right in the next town uh huh so our our Amazon shit gets here fast uh huh and you've read the stories about what it's like to work there right oh yeah. Like, it's a fucking dystopia. Oh, yeah. Like, they dock you pay for going to the bathroom. Like, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. So, it's probably, like, the picker at the warehouse or the packager, like, had to send their urine sample in the same day and just the boxes got mixed up because they haven't slept in a week or something. <laughs> so, this is what, this like, is, like, the employees. It's possible. They on the wrong boxes. Yeah, this but, is this is this is this is parse possible. Yeah. Why would Amazon have someone's urine test? Probably because they drug test their employees and they don't send you to an outside lab to do it. No. Nope. Because whatever. Nope. They have you mail it in or something. <sighs> I mean I mean oh god, god Arklin on the channel says the facility I work in is better than most. I got lucky. My building actually added bathrooms last year. That that doesn't sound as good as you think it does, man. Yay. That actually just last year we got a toilet. Woohoo! We're in the future now. I heard wow. next year they might give us water. <laughs> doesn't sound as good as you think, man. Yeah, like we <clears throat> like we have the Amazon Prime and I love it. And I hate that I love it because I know they treat their people like shit. Yep. And I know that dude has more money than God, and he could not treat his people like shit, but he chooses not to. But it makes life so easy. Oh, we're heading for a wonderful crash coming up. Just, just, yeah. All right, last story tonight. Oh my God. Um. Now I want to stress this is from the Mirror. Yes, but that's only because I did research this story to make sure it was true to the best of my ability. It went to a lot of Chinese sites. I translated them. They didn't read as well as this one did. So this is based off. This is just the English version of the story. Okay. So this, the story did happen. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna, I just want to put this picture up on screen and let people, <laughs> let's start with the mystery picture. I'll give you the link in a second. Let's start with the, the, the mystery picture. See if people can figure out what the hell is going on here. Um, here's a story, Tara. Well, just give you a second and figure this one out, everybody. Um, people are saying colon. No, not a colon. Is that a face? <laughs> nope, those aren't dentures. That didn't go up a butt. Shall we narrow it down? Um, this is a person who has a penis. Does that, does that help? <clears throat> oh, Christ, no. Is that a seashell? Um, a teenager had to have surgery to remove 29 magnetic balls from his bladder three months after he put them up 
is penis. Three months. The wow. curious Why? school, the curious schoolboy named Lee, thirteen, suffered intense abdominal pain, but was too embarrassed to tell his parents about it. However, it got too agonizing for him, and he was forced to seek medical attention. X-rays reveal the magnetic beads had formed a tight cluster in his bladder, meaning he had to go under the knife. Um. Roughly three months ago, while the boy was playing with magnetic balls, he lined them up and inserted them up his urethra out of curiosity. Okay, wait. Look, I know... It feels like something you would have done as a teenager. No, it does. It really does. Yes. When, you when, do weird shit. When, I won't think more than that on the air. When we're all kids... I'm sorry to say this. When you're a teenager, you're figuring out what the fuck your body does and is for. You yeah. do some wacky shit. Yeah. Everyone out there, everyone at home is going, I didn't. Do you know you did. Yes, you did. Don't lie. However, it did not occur to me in any of my wacky shit to go, I wonder if I can jam something in there. <laughs> That never crossed my mind. Not once. No? Never? Not once. I didn't go, I wonder if shit fits up there. Let's let's see what, what's going on there. I wonder if these little tiny BBs that will come apart at the slightest pressure will all go up there in a row and then come back out in a row. They actually make specific balls for that. This is another case of use the right tool for the job. And I know you're 13. If you tell your parents... I need sounding balls. They're probably not going to know what you're talking about or buy them for you. And that sucks, man. Now this I, is the answer, though. Now, I know that some people do enjoy putting things up there. But you're not the majority, guys. Uh, you're, you're very narrow, specific oh, sort of... They're all bloody. I'm not showing that picture. Oh, I'm not is. showing that picture. There's a picture of them after they come out, and you, it's not. You can good. find that picture yourself. I ain't showing it to you on my stream. Um, some people enjoy that. That's that's a thing. Okay. I'm just saying, that's not... Most people look down there and go, yeah, I ain't putting nothing there. Mm -mm. Yeah. Man, that thing hurts when someone kicks me there. I ain't putting anything in it. Hell no. Wait. This kid could have fucking died. He could have. Sepsis is <clears throat> real. And you know what? It'll it, kill you. I got to say this, and I acknowledge I don't have kids, but man, if that poor kid had just been able to go, Mom, Dad, I did a really stupid thing. Kelp. Yeah. Three months before. Shit like this is why I don't have kids. Yeah. Cat's never going to shove stuff up their dick. I mean, listen. Does have one anymore they cut it off but like they wouldn't do it anyway listen thumbs. listen parents never gonna tell me and be like listen i have to go to the er because i shoved a bunch of magnetic balls up my dick i'm not made for that i want to you know what? i want to do something good tonight parents if you're watching my show i am giving you permission to show them this story what we just did and tell them listen if you ever do something this stupid just tell me Please, I'll please still me. love you. <laughs> Everything will be fine. I might just... respect you just a scotch less. <laughs> but please tell me. But I'd rather that than you be dead. Yes, please tell me. <laughs> Let's do a good thing with this stupid sh Please tell me if you shove something up there and it gets stuck, don't just wait for it to go away. Can I just point out something horrible? What? I don't know if this is true in China, but all I'm picturing is, you remember the lunch line in the cafeteria? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that about crotch level metal <laughs> sliding thing <laughs> tray. <laughs> like, how strong were these magnets? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> my brain is a terrible place. Oh god! A terrible place. <laughs> like the grocery oh. store. <laughs> Are you accidentally humping the magazine rack and you, like, 
<laughs> you walk by a can of tuna and it flies off the shelf and it's stuck right. to your dick. Are you like the kid in that one episode of Amazing Stories where like, <laughs> girls' braces are just like... Do you remember that? That episode scared the shit out of me. I wouldn't go near a window for months because I was afraid of oh. getting hit by a comet and turned magnetic and having random shit flying. Oh. <sighs> Oh, all right. So the first thing we learned tonight is parents, please let your kids know you would rather find out they're an idiot than have them dead. Yeah. Just, Idiocy is curable. Yes, you can Death teach. Is not. You can't fix dead. That that's you can, you can fix stupid. Um, we've Sometimes. learned we've learned that maybe Amazon needs to slow some shit down or slow some piss down, as it were. Yeah. Um, uh, we've learned that, um, it's very strange in all of these horrible stories about these racist lessons that they never flip the script for some weird reason. I just think that's interesting. It is. Um, <laughs> we've learned there's an exceptional one-legged man in Indianapolis, and sir, we salute you tonight. That was amazing. You go, buddy. We need a Hall of Fame. <clears throat> we do. And finally, we've learned a dispute with your roommate should at worst be handled via a lawyer, yep. not via an action sequence. Maybe like a funny prank. <clears throat> Maybe a rubber snake in the fridge. You know. <laughs> Oh my God, Tara! I, I wondered. I'm just. I'm picturing. Just before he jumped out the window. I wonder if you put on a soundtrack. What would that soundtrack be? You're the best around. <laughs> Nothing ever going to keep. <laughs> Not here comes the boom. Oh, that too. X could have give it to you. That could work there yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit you know what i just realized youtube's gonna demonetize us because just it just matched that set the, me singing really shit <laughs>